Sandy Wiley. Welcome to my mental health channel, Fifty Shades of Black and White, where I wipe away the stigma of mental illness by talking about my experiences as a former patient of almost 20 years having borderline personality disorder. I talk about narcissism. I talk about schizophrenia, bipolar, post-traumatic stress disorder, schizoid, panic attacks, and a plethora of other mental health issues. But I talk about them as a former patient. I am not a licensed therapist. I do not hold a degree in psychology. So all I can do is come on and give you my personal experiences and my personal opinions, not professional opinions. And in return, all I ask of you is to be kind. Please be kind to me. Please be kind to everyone else in the comments and be kind to yourself as well. We can disagree, but we all need to agree to be kind and respectful to one another. Let's boost each other's morale up, okay? Let's not tear each other down. If you happen to like what you see, give it a thumbs up. Um, if you're new here, welcome. And please join my channel. It's 100% free. So now I know <laughs> quite, uh, quite a few of the last videos have been focusing solely on narcissism so we're going to get into my territory now which is borderline personality disorder so we're going to leave narcissism behind for a little bit and because this channel isn't just solely focused on that it's focused on all the mental health topics um, areas that i can contribute from personal experience and i've been diagnosed by at least two um, psychologist is having borderline personality disorder. How do, do borderlines escape? Okay. How do they escape all of these, you know, deep, you know, emotions, um, overwhelming, because that's what makes the borderline, right? Borderline ha has a hard time regulating their feelings, regulating their emotions. Um, that's why my channel is, you know, 50 shades of black or white. It's either black or white. It's either all or nothing. It's either they love you or they hate you. It's, you know, th that's called splitting when something is all or nothing. There's no like shades of gray. Now I'll only talk about my personal experiences of how I escape, um, those intense feelings, um, just think of you're trapped in an inferno, okay? The building is imploding, okay? Just think of 911, all right? When those planes went through the towers. And, you know, what do people do? They're jumping out of like 100 story windows, whatever they need to do to escape, right? Even if they're jumping to the death. Did you hear what I just said? They have to escape. The, the building is imploding, all right? That's how it feels for a borderline. They need to escape, even if they're jumping to their death. They feel they have no other choice. Just like with the people trapped in those Twin Towers, um, when the terrorists went through with the plane, they're jumping to their death because there's no other way to escape. That's my best analogy I can give you. Um, and so how do I escape when I can't, when they, when the feelings get too intense and it's like that inferno, I run away. Okay. I run away. You know, that song, it's an old song, my little runaway, run, 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 run away. This is an old song. I'm thinking it's from the fifties or sixties. Uh, why, 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 why she ran away? And I wonder, you know, I don't know. I didn't look it up. I mean, I didn't look up the lyrics, but this is what I do. Now I'm going to give you, I don't know if all borderlines run away. I'm just saying this has been my number one borderline behavior um, is running away. And I'm going to give you an example of, you know, how bad that behavior was. So. 
I was 22. I just got married to my husband. He was working at Sono Upson Engineering, which I eventually did um, join the force and I worked there myself. But before I worked for Stone and Webster, I worked as a preschool teacher. I got an associate's degree in early childhood education. I was 22. I just got married. Now, in the preschool at the Y, there was only two um, preschool teachers. It was me. I was a preschool teacher. And there was Jill Zacks. She was, um, the second preschool teacher, but she also was the director. Um, so she was my boss. She was the director of the nursery school program. I also worked summer camp there too in the summer because the preschool program would run like a school year, would run from September to June. And then the summer camp would be from June to September. And I worked the summer camp there too. Now me and Jill Zacks, I never mentioned her before now, were friends for several years as long as I worked there. I mean, she went to my wedding. I've been in her house. We used to go out together. Um, she'd always treat me because she knew I loved Carvel ice cream. So after work, she would say, hey, you know, let's go get a Carvel ice cream cone. You know, my treat on me and then I'll, and then I'll drive you home. Back then I wasn't driving. So my father used to drop me off on his way to work in the morning and I would walk home from the Y um, in the evening. And it was like a half an hour walk. I was only in my 20s. I had no kids. I was physically fit. You know, I was in good shape. And it was like a 30-minute walk. So I, I did it even in the winters, too. But, you know, back then I'm young and, you know. So Jill was like 11 years older than me. So she must have been like 33 years old at the time. And she wanted to, you know, have children. She was single. She lived with her parents um, and her her brother and sister. I believe her older sister was married to a doctor and had a um, child, a daughter um, named Lisa, who was Jill's niece, of course. And um, even though she lived with her parents and she wasn't married, she still, you know, she she loved children. You could see it. She loved her job as a preschool teacher. She wanted to have children. So she just wanted to leave me in the job and concentrate on, you know, having a baby. Um, I don't know. I don't even think she had a boyfriend at that point. Um, she was going out with a rock, um, a musician named Richie who had long, long hair. And he came to my wedding too. She said, can I bring Richie? I said, sure. <laughs> um, so... She wanted me to be, to fill her shoes because I've worked there for several years. We were friends. She thought I was a great worker. She liked me a lot and trusted me. And of course, you know, I've already, I'm already working there. So why not move up the ladder, get more money, a title, be director of the preschool. And then they would hire someone under me. I didn't want the job. I wanted to stay where I was. <laughs> and they also wanted me to continue working the summer camp. Um, I didn't want to work the summer camp. I wanted my summer off. I was married now, and we planned a trip to Bermuda. And if I worked the summer camp, I, I wouldn't be able to take any time off. I wouldn't be able to take a week off because um, at that time because I'd have to work the summer camp. Um, I don't know. Anyway, I didn't want either one. I, did, I didn't want to work summer camp that summer. And I certainly didn't want to be um, the director of the preschool program. That means I'd be responsible for all the money, the financial end of it. I'd be responsible for um, the person who was under me. So if that person, you know, called out sick, I'd be responsible in finding someone else. You know, I'd be their boss. I didn't want to be responsible for anyone else. I didn't want to be anyone else's. Of course, it would be a title and a pay raise. Um but I didn't want it. You know, I was 22. I didn't want that. Well, she and another co-worker, uh, the woman she was friends with in the office, um, they were really, you know, really nudging me, you know, really pushing me into those two things for me to be the director and for me to work, you know, the summer. Like, what are you going to do all summer? Well, 
you know, that's my business, you know, I, if I want to take the summer off. But anyway, I was very shy and very intimidated by people back then. Um, and I felt like I was in a pressure cooker. Um, I felt, you know, they were like, you know, I almost felt like they were bullying me. Now, were they really bullying me? To look back now as a 58-year-old adult, um, they would just probably thought, you know, hey, you know, you've been here for a few years. We like you. We respect you. You're a good worker. We think that, you know, you should be the next, you should just step up and be the director. Why Why would we want to, you know, trust anyone else? You've, been, you've already shown your colors. You've shown that you can do the, you're good, you're reliable, depend, and the children love you. You know, we want you. But I didn't want it. And I try to tell them meekly and shyly, you know, no, I, I don't, I don't really want the job. And um, I don't want to work the, the summer camp this summer. Um, you know, but they weren't kind of like having any of it. So, you know, I got kind of, um, I felt pressured. I felt intimidated, intimidated. And, um, of course, I'm a borderline. I didn't know I was borderline at that time. So someone else might feel a little pressured, you know, or somewhat intimidated. But, you know, I feel things much more intensely. A borderline, part of that, you know, the personality disorder is to feel things much, much more intensely than the average person would feel. So even though me and Jill were friends... And she's trying to encourage me to step up because she wants to leave. She wants to leave, but she wanted to leave, you know, her position in good hands, you know. And that was me. She said she wanted to give it to me, but I did not want it. I told her I didn't, you know, but she wasn't having it. You know how sometimes you, you know, tell someone something and like they're really, um, they're not having it. They're trying to. So I, I walked off the job i wrote a letter to the man uh the manager of the y they switched hands and i really wasn't crazy about the new manager i didn't dislike him he wasn't a bad guy but i liked the other manager brother bridget uh, but anyway i wrote and i wrote a letter um it was a friday so after work um i wrote a letter and i put it on his desk and the letter said that um, this is my final notice. Um, I'm not going to, um, be working here anymore. I did not give a two week notice. I don't know. Like they say it's, um, a, is it a courtesy to give a two week notice? I should have. I worked there for year, three and a half years and me and Jill were friends and she had no idea this was coming. I mean, she was like blown out of the water. She had no idea that I was this disgruntled over it. Um, and then I said in the email some nasty things about Jill. I had said that she was yelling at the kids, um, which she did raise her voice on occasion. Uh, and I also, uh, I don't know what I said. She was a very good worker. But I think I just said that, you know, um, I just didn't want to work there anymore. Um. I just felt like, you know, me and Jill weren't compatible and left it like that. So whenever he saw that, I don't know when he saw it, uh, he would be like, huh? So all of a sudden now Jill had to scurry around and find someone to replace me because I didn't leave in June. I think I left in May, uh, like a month before uh, the preschool was, was closed for the um, summer. So there was still a few weeks where she had to scurry around and find someone to fill, you know, someone else to fill my, my position or like temporary or something. So I, that, that was it. And I never spoke to her again, except, um, I don't know. I, I sent her, a, um, I sent her a letter years, years after that, um, I don't know. I sent her a letter and I told her I apologized for what I did. Uh, this was before I had children. I sent her this letter. She had already had her baby. She had a boy. Um, and I said, I'm sorry. And she said, oh, I forgave you a long time ago. I thought we were friends. That's what she said. It was very nice and everything. 
So, what could I have done differently, you know, instead of running away, you know, uh, not even saying goodbye? I didn't say goodbye to her. I said nothing to her. Absolutely nothing to her. I just left a letter in the the manager the manager of the whole YMCA. I left a letter in his office on his desk saying that I was no longer going to be working there. I said nothing to Jill. We were friends for years. Um, we worked together for three and a half years. I mean, you know, I knew all about her personal life. I mean, details. And she knew all about mine. And, you know, I've been in her house. She went to my wedding. And I didn't even say goodbye. So, I the real mature, um, non-borderline thing would have been to sit down and talk to her. And, and you know, and, and tell her that I feel like you're pressuring me. You know, um, this this is, you know... These are my plans. I wish you would please respect how I feel. I feel like you're pressuring me. And, you know, I should have had said something like that. I should have had said, you know, I'd rather quit than take the director's position. Um, I do not want to work this summer. I, I want to have a vacation. We did go to Bermuda. Um, like, I didn't want to do it. Um, I just got married. <laughs> but anyway, it was my business. You know, it wasn't mandatory for me to work the summer camp, okay? I did not sign up for that. It was, you know, voluntary. I could work it if I wanted to. I didn't have to. It wasn't part of my job description that I had to be a camp counselor. Um, I did do it the previous summer, and they liked it. They liked me, and, you know, I taught the kids to swim. The Y has a big pool, and we took them on outings and all that. But I didn't want to do it. I just got married, and I didn't want to do it. So I should have just sat down and say, hey, you know, I don't, I, this is how I feel. I don't feel like you're respecting my feelings. And she, I know her. She would have been all right with it. She would have felt bad, like, oh, gee, you know, I'm sorry you feel like that. I really think you would have made a good director. And then I could have told her, I'll help you um, when you interview for the new director, <laughs> which she would have to do before she left. Um, I'll be there because that'll be my new boss. So I'd want to, you know, um, I'd want to do that. I'd want to, um, yeah. So I didn't handle it well. I just ran away, you know. And I did this. Well, this is a common theme of mine throughout my life then when my my emotions become insurmountable I run I just you know I run away and this is the way that I escape my feelings so instead of dealing with those feelings dealing of feeling you know pressured into something I didn't want to do instead of I, you know, I just left and then I don't have to deal with them trying to talk me into doing something I didn't want to do. They no longer, no longer have to deal with it. You know, I just run. When you run, you know, you no longer have to deal with, um, you know, what you're running from, obviously. But sometimes it's like jumping out of that inferno, okay? It's not good. You're not running to something, something good. You know, you're, you're running from something good to something bad. Sometimes it's like that. So, um, have, I just kept running in, all my life. Um, I ran from different, you know, I ran, I walked off jobs. I, um, I ran away from relationships, um, you know, relationships that I could have, um, I did that with my best friend, Linda. Um, Linda, uh, let's see, she, she would talk about her pro problems a lot with me. And, um, she never, you know, made any effort to the friendship, I thought. And when my son had, the last straw for me is when my son's birthday came and she didn't show up. And she didn't even tell me she wasn't coming. You know, like, where's Linda? Holly said, where's your best friend? Where's your other friend, Linda? 
I go, I don't know. You know, I, I thought she's coming. Guess not. <laughs> then when we got home from Austin's birthday party, it was at a bowling alley. That's right. It was at a bowling alley. Um, I got this message on my answering machine. Hi, it's Linda. Oh, sorry I didn't make your, your son's party, but um, my son Joseph didn't want to go or something like that. When I heard that, I said, that's it, you know. <laughs> Sayonara, baby. Uh, we were friends for five years, me and Linda. And um, what could I have done differently? Well, Linda was a nice girl. She wasn't bad, you know. She wasn't uh, mean. She was kind. I mean, she, you know, uh, looking back, I could have just said, Linda, you know, you really hurt me that, you know, you didn't show up for my son's birthday party. I think, you know, you could have made the effort, you know, even if your son didn't want to come, you could have got a babysitter or, you know, something like that. After all, I'm one of your best friends and I was one of her best friends. She didn't have many friends back then. Anyway, she moved to California. She got married and she moved to California. <laughs> And I did meet Linda um, at the workout club she, when she came to visit her family because her family lives up here. Uh, we ran into each other at uh, Planet Fitness. And, um, yeah, we start talking, no hard feelings, you know. Um, she asked my phone number. I gave it to her. She never called me. <laughs> but, I mean, we talked a lot. I told her deep. I told her per very personal things about I was having an affair with my psychologist. She told me that she, you know, got married. Um, da, 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 da. You know, we caught up on old times. But she never, um, you know, it was water under the bridge at that point. But what I could have done instead of run away because I was so hurt, you know what I mean? Um, and even my other friend, Holly, said, you know, I should have been hurt because she said, like, you know, she's one of your best friends. Why didn't she show up at your son's birthday party? You and, you know, of course you invited her. Um, and she never even told me she wasn't coming or anything. And then I just get this message when I come home. And I didn't think that was right. My husband said it wasn't right. My husband was glad when I ended the friendship. He goes, oh, I never liked Linda anyway. All she did was talk about her own problems. All she wanted you for was, you know. But, you know. I did like Linda, okay? I thought she was a nice person. Um, I think that it would have been more mature for me if I, you know, we were friends for five years, okay? It would have been better instead of running away. I mean, what I mean running away is after that, um, of that episode of her not showing up at my son's birthday party and just leaving a message after the fact on my phone, um... I never talked to her again. She'd ring, she'd call me up and call me up. Sandy, are you all right? I've been calling you, you know, you're not answering. And then the next day, ring, ring, ring. Sandy, are you there? I'm getting worried. I keep calling you, you're not answering me. Ring, ring. And this would go on. Linda would be calling me and calling me and I'd never, I'd never answer. Or if my husband answered, oh, I'm sorry, Linda, she's out. Oh, well, tell her to call me back. I never called her. So I just ignored her. I just, that's it, you know. She hurt me. I didn't want to deal with the hurt, you know. And so runaway behavior. You know how many times I run away from, from therapists? But I think looking back, that was probably good. I should have stayed away, you know, from some of them. But anyway, that's the runaway behavior. That's like, you know, jumping out of the, um, the you know, the inferno. Um just running away because I can't deal with the hurt so I don't deal with it I just completely leave go so I don't have to deal with those feelings I don't condone this behavior I don't think it's you know looking back I wish I you know on some of these things I could have been more upfront and honest with the, the people or my job um, but that was me little runaway, run, 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 